Greetings. My name is Jace Hargis, and I would like to share an overview of a concept that I've developed on looking at effective teachings, particularly how we can assess, measure, and evaluate effective teaching. The derivative of this comes a lot from Ken Bain's uh, research and his book on the best college teachers. In this book, um, I pulled out four major themes. Uh, one was that he's, he's found that the best college teachers know how we learn, how we process information. Um, the best college teachers view uh, teaching as a serious intellectual endeavor. And the one that I've got highlighted is that uh, the best college teachers assess, measure, and evaluate their own uh, teaching and they make appropriate judgments along the way. And finally, they are able to create these environments where all kinds of learners can come and process in, in their own individual ways. Um, in our state, in, in our institution, uh, University of California, they've done a lot of work on this. We have some prior literature that shows um, how we document this, how we approach this, how we attend to teaching. Uh, I'm sure that every state, every university has this, and so there is this, this kind of deep, rich background in how we look at teaching. I do want to start with some, some basic definitions. Sometimes these terms are a little unfamiliar in the context of education, but these are three primary steps that we take. Obviously, we look to assess or we gather these behaviors on, on what people are able to know and do and think. Um, secondly, we, we then have some sort of measurement or we have a, a set of criteria that we use that we're able to compare to what those behaviors are. And then finally, we take those first two and we make a comparison and ultimately make a judgment based on the data we collected to evaluate. In a nutshell, this is the one slide that describes uh, the process. It does follow, as I mentioned, those three major attributes of assessment, measurement, and evaluation. And within that, we've got some, some multiple steps. And so what we do is we basically offer to, uh, to meet uh, with a faculty who's interested and to do a bit of a pre-observation, figure out what their goals are, their teaching style, their teaching statements, and then we go in and we do an actual observation. Now, an observation is just that. It's not an evaluation. It simply is gathering data. Uh, and the way that we do that is using three different instruments. The first is a quantitative checklist uh, done by Nancy Chisholm in 1999, uh, where we kind of look at different attributes. The second is a qualitative, where basically we write a narrative of exactly the kind of things that are happening in the classroom. And the third is the faculty flow, flow diagram, where we diagram graphically what's uh, the dynamics in the class, where the professor walks, how many students, and what students are asking questions. And I'll show you an example of that in just a moment. And then we meet afterwards, and we just share this information and engage the, the faculty member in a conversation, ultimately sharing some, some effective research uh, with them that aligns with um, him or hers um, questions on what they did in the classroom. Then we provide them with a rubric, and this is a, basically a way that they can look at their own teaching, their own data, and they can make some decisions based on what they did compared to some of these uh, best practices. Ultimately, they then take all that and they do some self-evaluation. A faculty flow diagram, here's a couple of examples, uh, just really basically what this is. You can tell that this is, it looks like a lot of circles, basically each one of these represents a student. Uh, the one in color may be a little bit easier to, to read. The red is where the faculty member walks during the 50 minute period. The blues are when a student would respond or answer to a question. And this kind of gives a sense on what happened as far as the proximity control, um, the kind of engagement, uh, the kind of things that are going on. Bottom line is that really only one person can interpret this, which is the faculty member themselves. They make meaning to this, they put names to the students' faces, they look and see whether this is aligning with their outcomes. And so that's the, the whole point of here is to provide them this kind of data so that they can then write up a subsequent uh, evaluation. The measurement rubric, we came through, we basically itemized a lot of different things that, uh, from a research base that you might look at for these things. And so this is a very lengthy, healthy um, kind of size of a, of a rubric. And the whole point is so the faculty can see which parts of this they'd like to attend to, focus on possibly in the beginning, and then ultimately build up to a larger set. And then finally, this whole point of basically trying to help, um, again, provide the kind of data the faculty then can write about and empower them. Uh, to create some tables and, and reflections and, and this whole kind of ongoing of, of visiting and revisiting their, their teaching philosophy and statements. One other thing that we do as an addition is we also uh, will go out and do what's called a small group perception study. This has been done for quite a while, but it's, it's going into the classroom. The last 10 minutes or so, the faculty member leaves, and we ask these basic questions. You know, what's going well? What's not going so well? What's one thing that might be able to change? Uh, we do a bit of a trend analysis and then we aggregate these scores and these data and we share that with the, the faculty members someplace in the middle of the, uh, the term so that if they needed to make some changes, they could make those uh, and, and see some results from the students in that particular class. 
And that's it. A little bit of overview for assessment, measurement, and evaluation of effective teaching. My name is Jace Hargis. Thank you.